So we're again looking at the final exam for 2017. We're now looking at problem four, which involves trellis coded modulation. And the first part of the question asks us to complete the uh, trellis diagram uh, for uh, this. Um, here's the trellis um, diagram. And this is the um, shift register implementation of the code, the TCM code, to be used. So based on looking at this shift reg register implementation, we're supposed to complete the uh, code word, uh, excuse me, the trellis. So you can see that there are two inputs. So we would say that k equal two. There are three outputs, so we would say n equal three. So this is a rate two thirds code. Uh, we can see that we're, when we complete this trellis, we're supposed to use the code words, we're supposed to assign it that the first slot is the U1 bit, the second slot is the U2 bit, and the third slot is the U3 bit. So each code word has three bits. Um, this is TCM, so of course in the trellis there's going to be two entries, and there are two entries here because um, the first one will be either a zero or a one, depending on what the input M1 is. So here we have the M1 input, and it's not coded. So because of that, uh, on every transition, uh, every like from state A to state A, there are two possibilities for M1. So we have to have two code words for this transition from state A to state A. And that's true for every transition, from state A to B, B to C, etc. Every transition has two valid code words because one of the code words, uh, one of the bits in the code word has no encoding. So in this case, uh, we'll see that um, we need to calculate the other entries. So I, I could go through and just systematically uh, put a zero and a one. A 0 and a 1 in the first bit because I know that that's uh, going to be the difference. The only difference between the two rails is that first bit. So now the work we have to do is to look at the shift register implementation which is uh, over here. Uh, this, this part of the uh, setup here. This is the shift register implementation. It's going to tell us what U2 and U3 are. So those are the last two entries that I have to worry about in this uh, trellis uh, diagram that I'm supposed to complete. So uh, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to go through and uh, just uh, start from the state zero. So if I'm at state zero, what does that tell me? Uh, state A, I should say. If I'm at state A, that means that this is zero, zero. And of course, the... Um, uh, two possibilities are that I could have at the input, M2 could be a 0 or could be a 1. And of course, if I'm at state 0, 0 and I put in a 0, I'm going to stay at state A. So that would be this red rail here would be input a 0. So if I were to put this one, it would correspond here. And then the 1, if it comes in, that would correspond to this other transition. So this would give me an A to A transition. And if I have a zero coming in, uh, one coming in, it would be the A to B transition. So that's why I'm looking at these two different rails. Now, what happens, let's, let's state, uh, start with the zero, if I'm going A to A. Well, we can see now that U2 would be a zero plus a zero plus a zero. That's clearly going to be a zero. And U3 is only adding the two zeros. Of course, that's also going to be a zero, zero. So I could um, uh, quite easily, let's make this a little finer, um, put that the uh, code word would be 0, 0, and 0, 0 for this transition from A to A. So let's move on now to uh, the transitions from B. So I'm going to start at state B. So at state B, the um, register is clearly 1, 0. So I took, um, of course, the 1, 0 here, put it in my state. Uh, there are two transitions because, of course, there are two inputs. It could be a 0 or it could be a 1. 
if I have a zero that comes in, then I'm going to be going uh, from uh, state B to state C. So the zero corresponds to this transition here from B to C. And if I have a one that comes in, of course I have the opposite transition uh, from B to D. So these two uh, rails, I have to calculate what are the um, code entries for the last two bits. So I'll start again with the, supposing there's a zero that comes in, and now I make the calculation for U2. Zero plus one plus zero, that gives a one. And if I do the lower one, one plus zero, just the, now oh, excuse me, I was made a mistake earlier. It's not the sum of one and zero, it's just uh, the middle bit one. So here it's just a one. It doesn't change my previous calculation. I'm sorry about the confusion there though. Um, U3 is just this part of the state and not uh, the sum of the two states, uh, as I mentioned previously. Um, but uh, in any case, now I have 1, 1 for the uh, zero transition, so the red rail. So I'm going to put a 1, excuse me, I'm going to put a 1 and a 1 for these entries. Now I go back and I say, suppose I'm interested now when there is a, a one at the input. Of course, you, the third bit doesn't change. It's just the state is not completely independent of what the input bit is. So that's not going to change. But now I have u2. And u2 is a function of the input. And now I have one plus one. And I'm going to actually get a zero. Oh, excuse me. I'm not going to get one plus one. So sorry. Um, in this case, I'm getting 1 plus 0, and that's going to give me, once again, a 1. So for the transition from B to D, I also have now this 1, 1, 1, 1 code. So let's go on uh, to uh, now to uh, state C. So I'm looking here at state C. And at state C, I'm going to put in that I have, of course, entries 0 and 1 here. And, of course, there's 0, 1 that come in. Uh, for the 0 transition, of course, that means I'm going from state C to state A. So that would be from C to A. And if I get a 1, of course, in that case, I'm going from C to B. So let's start with the 0 at the input. And when I have a 0 at the input, I'm calculating 0 plus 1. That's going to give me a 1. And of course, here u3 is just looking at what is this part of the state. And that's equal to 0. So I have 1, 0 as my entry on the 0 transition. So I'm going to put a 1, 0, 1, 0. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to change the um, input from a 0 to a 1. So now I'm going to put in a 1 here. And of course we said previously that this one wouldn't change. I didn't have to erase it. It's a 0. But now I have 1 plus 1, which is going to give me a 0. So now I have a 0, 0 as the last two code bits for the transition now uh, from C to B. From C to B, the code is now 0, 0, 0, 0. So now we're up to state D. So I'm going to put into the state, I'm going to put 1, 1. Um, if I have a 0 input, uh, of course that means that I'm going from D to C. So this is the transition D to C, if I get 0. And if I have a 1 at the input, of course, it's the other transition. It's staying D all the time, so D to D. I have two 1s, and I input a 1, so it's always staying 1. So let's start with the um, uh, entry of a 0. In this case, I can calculate the two code words. Uh, for U2, it is 0 plus 1, which gives me a 1. And for U3, of course, it just is the uh, second bit. So in this case, I can write in the uh, elements are 1, 1, 1, 1 for this transition. 
And let's go to the uh, next case. Um, and the next case is instead we have a 1 at the input. And with the 1 at the input, of course, uh, we have 1 plus 1, which is giving me a 0 now for U2. And the U3, of course, doesn't change. So now my code word is 0, 1 for this transition. And I have completed the um, encoding trellis.